Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and this is a review for the Font Top Glass Rinser. You'll receive an illustrated manual with detailed step-by-step -step installation instructions, a 2.5 foot flexible supply line and mini wrench, stainless steel base on a downward sloping angled wedge, actuator arm with stainless steel core and silicone top, mounting shank with pre-installed washers and nuts, and a T adapter for your water line with two rubber washers. The kit includes a small nylon washer that is meant to be installed on the spray nozzle under the actuator to reduce friction, though technically it's optional, and the unit functions fine without it. The brass nut at the bottom should be removed prior to installation, and this small gray and orange rubber plug is a back check valve and should be installed with high pressure water lines to prevent reverse flow that could potentially cause leaks when the water to the rinser stops flowing. Just make sure to install it orange side out. You'll also need to remove the large metal washer and large rubber washer. However, you can leave the small washer in place. The assembly order will be shank, then base, the large rubber washer flat side up and ridge side down, metal washer, and lastly the brass nut. Remember to leave the screws only about halfway threaded through the nut. On top, install the small nylon washer and then the actuator. The large connector of the water line attaches to the bottom of the shank, and this yellow plastic tool with wings will help you tighten it securely. The tool is double-sided too, so sliding it down to the small connector will allow you to use it to tighten that nut too. Note that the tool is not removable from the hose. The glass rinser has a diameter of 5 inches and length of 6 inches from the back to the front of the unit. The unit will sit above your countertop about 1 and 3 quarter inches. The base is made of solid stainless steel and feels durable and heavy duty. It has a stylish brushed metal finish that will match other stainless steel fixtures and appliances. The unit activates when the actuator is pressed down, and powerful jets of water will emit in all directions from the small holes in the sprayer nozzle. Before installation, be sure to shut off the water line that you'll be using with the rinser. While you can use either cold or hot water, I chose cold because my hot water comes out at 160 degrees Fahrenheit, which not only is a potential scald risk, but I worry it could crack or shatter cold glasses in the wintertime from thermal shock. If you're replacing an existing fixture, like a soap dispenser, you'll have to disassemble and remove it first, which may involve unthreading mounting nuts or other components under the counter. Clean the mounting surface well and remove any existing caulk, adhesive, or debris. The bottom of the rinser base has a rubber o-ring that will compress to your countertop in order to create a leak-free seal, so you need to make sure the surface it sits on is flat and smooth. When placing the base over the hole in the countertop, ensure that the entire o-ring is touching the surface around the hole. Keep in mind that you'll need at least 3.5 inches on center between the fixture holes and 2.5 inches from the backsplash to the hole center in order to fit the base. Next, you're going to insert the mounting shank, making sure the small rubber washer is in place before dropping the shank through the hole in the rinser base. You can see the tight clearance here to my faucet since my holes are spaced 4 inches apart on center. In order for the water to drain out of the rinser into the sink, the lip has to extend over the edge of the sink, so the hole center should be within 3 inches of the sink's edge. Now, under the counter, install both large washers, rubber one first, followed by the metal one. Then thread on the brass nut with the screw heads facing out. Use the nut to tighten both the washers all the way to the bottom of the counter. When the brass nut is finger tight, use a Phillips screwdriver to alternately tighten each screw. Make sure to switch back and forth every couple of turns to ensure uniform compression. On top, check to make sure the base hasn't rotated and if it has, reposition it before final tightening. You may need an additional person to hold the base still and stabilize the shank with a wrench to prevent unwanted movement or unthreading. When secure, the base should not move at all, and it'll have a leak-proof seal underneath. Then place the washer and actuator over the nozzle. With the water line still shut off, remove the sink faucet's hose from the water line, and be ready with a cloth or cup to catch any water that may run out of the line. Now, install the T-adapter, making sure the rubber washer is installed in the nut prior to connection. The washer will be sufficient in creating a watertight seal, and plumber's tape is not required. After the nut is finger tight, you can secure it with a wrench.
The top of the T can be repositioned after tightening. Reconnect your faucet's water line at the top, then connect the supply line's small connector to the side valve on the T, tightening it with the yellow tool. Finally, connect the large end of the supply line to the bottom of the rinser's shank and use the yellow tool to tighten fully. Be careful not to over tighten, as this can actually lead to leaking. Slowly and carefully open the valve for the water line and check each connection for leaks before continuing. I haven't seen any leaks, so that's great. Now we can test out the rinser. Just place a glass over the actuator and press down firmly. Powerful jets of water will shoot into the glass in all directions, reaching the bottom and all sides as long as the actuator is depressed, quickly rinsing out your glass in seconds. Because the base is angled into the sink, most of the water drains out, though you can still see there's a little left in mine on top of the actuator and near the edge of the lip. The rinser is also water efficient, as two presses dispense less than a quarter cup of water, versus traditional glass rinsing, which can use over a cup of water to rinse a single glass. The rinser works well with tall glasses too, like the champagne flute, and the spray reaches all the way to the bottom of the glass. It'll also work with mugs, wine glasses, and mason jars, as long as the opening of the vessel is less than four and a half inches. My recommendation is to rinse with a series of quick bursts rather than running the rinser for several seconds. This is especially helpful when rinsing oddly shaped or narrow necked containers, as high volumes of water tend to pull in the bottleneck, preventing the jets from reaching the bottom of the vessel and potentially causing some splashing. Overall, this glass rinser was easy to install, works well, and cleans efficiently, rinsing my glasses quickly with less water than using the faucet. I also like that it looks great with my existing stainless steel fixtures, and cleans up easily with a simple wipe with a dishcloth. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and join me next time.